Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have Writer's Tears, Cast Strength 2021. Yay! So, whiskey base 184851. So this came onto the market officially in June 2021. It is now December 2021, and I finally have found a bottle here in Germany. Not the easiest thing to do. Had a recommended retail price of 140 euros. I got it for 103, which I'm not complaining about. So what I am complaining about is, of course, as I do every year, well, last year, 2020, I forgot to do it. I didn't buy the bottle, was the fact of the, um, the numbers of bottles. There are 6,000 bottles of this worldwide. There are 4,500 in the 700 milliliter, and there are 1,500 in in the 700 and 1,500, 750 milliliters. And here it says, of course, on the label, limited to 4,500 bottles only. That's a lie, it's 6,000 bottles, all right? So, um, Writer's Tears is a interesting brand. So I've talked about them a few times here, at least on my German channel I have. And what we have here, and I've actually done videos here about the Writer's Tears from 2021, 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015, and 2014. So there has been 11 releases, so I don't have the 2010, 11, 12, and 13. And I somehow forgot to do with the 2020, forgive me. All right, but everything else I've tasted, and I have actually done a review on my German channel where I've done five different cast strengths from Writer's Tears, compared them blind, and so on, ranked them, and so on. The earlier versions were almost always better. Hmm. So, there's a trend to be seen here. 2020, it just didn't make it to the German market, or I just ignored it or didn't find it. Now, there's one thing I don't understand. Maybe someone can help me here. We have here, um, uh, whiskey type, pot, and malt. Very good. So, it's a mix of um, single pot still and single malt made at Middleton. Um, Bernard Walsh has an agreement with um, Irish distillers so they can actually use their, um, their equipment to make whiskey for that. Now, he sold the company to a Luxembourg company, so who knows who has the rights now. This is the 2021. I have bottle number 2,417 of 4,500. Why don't you just say 6,000? All right, so I don't know why you have to do it that way. 54.2%. Um, bourbon was the um, X um, cast type. And then we have chapter four. Here, chapter four. I looked everywhere online to find information about chapter four. Could not find it. If anyone knows some more information about chapter four, that would be absolutely appreciated. Why chapter four? Even the 2020 bottling had chapter four on it. Why? I don't know. All right, so it says here, this unique release selects only the finest distillates of um, single pot still and single malt Irish whiskey matured in exceptionally, an uh, exceptional, excuse me, American oak casks, non-chilled filtered, yay. Natural color would be good to know as well. Um, this whiskey is a full-bodied, high-strength, flavorsome whiskey limited to 4,500 bottles only. Hmm. We now live in a global world, by the way, with internet, and we do research things, we find things out, so... And even your press release said 6,000 bottles, so... Um, why don't you just put that on there? Um, the official press release I have here, one second... So it says here, come on, come on, come on. I'm going to nose this in the meanwhile. Interestingly young. Uh-oh. It is a no age statement here. Um, that is a little bit of my problem I sometimes have here. Um, what do we have here? The official press release here from um, Bernard Walsh said, the 11th release of the Super Premium Writer's Tears um, cast strength whiskey is limited to 6,000 bottles worldwide, 1,500 USA and 4,500 ROW, rest of world. All right. So, and Bernard Walsh, the creator here, the co-creator, co-founder here of Writer's Tears Collection and Walsh Whiskey. Just recently sold it. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't have a good feeling here. I have the feeling that um, we will not have as many products and we will not have as much distribution as we used to have. Maybe more in the Eastern Europe world, uh, but not here in Germany and maybe not as much in America. I get young pot still. I might be totally wrong. 
It might be young single malt whiskey, but I get young pot still. What am I going to compare it to? I always compare it to something. I have a red breast. I have a red breast cast during 12 year old. This is B1, batch one from 2021, 56.3%. Um, so um, I have not done my um, review about this yet. I will one day. <laughs> I might compare it to the batch one of 2020 and maybe the batch one of 2019. I know that this comparison is not perfect. There's two, three reasons. Reason number one, we have here sherry and bourbon. We only have bourbon here. The second reason, we have 56.3 um, versus here are 54.2. And the second reason is I can get this for 60 euros and I'm paying over uh, some places 120 euros. So I can get two bottles of this or one bottle of this. All right, so hmm, that is limited, and this is also little limited with batches, but not as limited. So coloring, um, why did they not write someplace natural color? They did write non-chilled filter, but they did not write natural color. Nowhere on the bottle or on the um, label or on the box or online does it say here natural color, which is a shame. It might just be here with... Um, E one hundred fifty eight on the nose. I get a I get honeysuckle, but I get a yeah I get a I get honeysuckle in June. So honeysuckle is the best in August. It's very ripe. It's very sweet. All the bees are around it, and in June it just starts and it has a little bit of a of a faint type of lemony character to it. And I'm getting lemon lemon um, citrus acid with. Um, Okay, lemon citrus flavor, sourness with um, the honeysuckle. Get a little bit of the malt. Don't get much bourbon at all, M much wood either. Ah, this is good stuff. Mm. All right, let's try this 54.2%. Uh, Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, oh, young, yeah, astringent. Not that good. This is a C C minus whiskey. I'm shocked, disappointed, and um, a little bit underwhelmed to be honest. Not a good flavor. Not a good aftertaste. Wow. All right, Bernal Walsh. Um, thank you for giving a, me an interview back then at the Irish um, we, uh, I, uh, Whiskey Live um, Ireland in Dublin 2019. I have the feeling that here younger spirit was used than normal. I did not have 2020, unfortunately. And I, as I've said before, the 2013, the 2014 were much, 2015 were better than the 17, 18, 19 bottles. Uh, and it seemed to have gone downhill since then. I'm going to put a little bit of water in here. I'm going to take it down to about 49, 50%. Did not do it any favors on the nose. Ooh. Tiny, tiny little bit of barrel char. A little bit of yeast. That honeysuckle is still present. And the citrus, that lemon peel moment is stronger. I took it down to about 46%, to be honest. It's much higher pitch now. It's much of a... I don't know if you've ever had these... Um, it's like a lemon drop, exactly. If you've ever been to England, lemon drops. Um, it's a lemon candy. It's very, very citrus, very lemony. Um, that's what I'm getting here. I have never had a lemon drop before in an Irish Tears whiskey. Hmm, this is new. This is not something that I can recommend. C minus as a taste and D minus as a value for money. So sorry. My wife loves the box. She's used these as decorating many, many times. And if you ever need to take it out of the box and put it back in the box, you put it in there, you push it up through, and then you can put it down here. There's actually a little knobby thing that locks it in place and so it doesn't wiggle and wobble that much. Um, yeah, very high, a little bit like a cognac um, bottle design here, in my personal opinion. You can do whatever you want to with it. Does not fit on my shelves. It's always in the top shelves, which I don't like either, but that's my problem here. 
So let's turn it around. Label design is okay, and chapter four I need to know. All right, just as a comparison real quick, the Redbreast 12 cast strength, much, much better. This is probably one of my favorite. Oh, question of the day. What is your favorite Irish cast strength whiskey? The Irishman 17 would be my favorite, but I can't get it. So I'm going to go for the Red Breast 12 as my favorite cast strength Irish whiskey. Mmm. Mmm. And it doesn't matter which batch. They're all good, in my personal opinion. Some are better than others, but they're all high, high, high class. Um, oh, yeah. Mmm. Very, very good. I like Red Breast. I like Red Breast 12. I like Red Breast 12 cast strength. I like Red Breast um, 21. 15 and I were not the best of friends. I mean, it's good. If you can't find anything else, go for it. And Lustau is also something I can recommend. So they're doing pretty good things. Um, Red Breast, wow. Writer's Tears. Ah. I'm going to say they used to be better. I'm sorry. I just think you're putting a little bit of too young of juice in the bottle at the moment, and it's at least not hitting my palate the way I thought it used to and the way I th remember it being. All right, so what is your favorite cast strength whiskey from Ireland? Please write in the comments. That'd be great. Thank you very much. I cannot recommend buying or seeking out the um, 2021 release of the Writer's Tears. Go back to number 17, 18 if you can find it for a decent price. If you can find a Dusty someplace, buy it. It's definitely worth the money, um, and I have to go find out if I can go buy a bottle of 2020 anyplace soon. And I'm not really sure if there'll be a 2022 edition at all, so who knows? Maybe these might become collector's items. Not a conspiracy theory, just kind of like I don't know what's going on with Writer's Tears after Bernard Walsh has sold it off to a Luxembourg company instead, distribution company. Thank you very much for liking, subscribing, telling others, and also sharing. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.